My dear students, today I will be delivering lecture on a topic restriction endonucleases and cloning vectors. The recombinant DNA technology involves the isolation of a desired gene and integrating it into another DNA molecule called vector which helps in transferring the gene into suitable organism called host. The intention of whole process is either to produce protein encoded by desired gene in large scale or development of a desired phenotype in the host organism due to its expression. This ability of the geneticist to construct desired recombinant DNA molecule at will is the basis of recombinant DNA technology. Recombinant DNA technology employs certain biological products and agents which may be referred to as genetic cloning tools for achieving its objectives. Some of the most important tools basic to almost all gene cloning experiments are restriction endonuclease, cloning vector, DNA ligase, and host. Now let us take up restriction enzymes. Organisms contain number of endonucleases which produce internal cuts or cleavage either at only one or both strands of DNA duplex. Most of the endonucleases clip DNA molecules at random sites except for some endonucleases which cut DNA at specific base sequences called recognition sequences or sites. Such endonucleases which recognize specific restriction sites for cleaving DNA molecule are called restriction enzymes or restriction endonucleases. They were discovered in 1970 by Hamilton Smith and Daniel Nathans. The term restriction endonuclease is derived from the Greek word endon meaning within, depicting restriction enzyme making internal cuts in DNA molecules. Though there are different types of restriction enzymes, only type 2 enzymes are employed in the restriction mapping and gene cloning because they keep DNA at specific sites. Now let us see the naming of restriction endonucleases. The restriction endonucleases are named by following certain pattern. First, the first letter of the genus from which the given name is discovered is written in capital followed by the first two letters of the species name of the organism. The three letters are written in italics. For example, ECO derived from Scherichia coli. Capital E comes from the first letter of genus Scherichia and CO comes from the first two letters of the species name coli. Similarly, HIN from Haemophilus influenza and HEPA from Haemophilus para influenza. Number 2. If the enzyme is produced by a specific strain, a letter designating the strain is appended to the name. For example, ECO R as the enzyme is produced by Scherichia coli strain RY13. Thirdly, the first restriction enzyme produced by the Scherichia coli strain RY13 is designated as ECO R1. One decades the first restriction enzyme derived from the particular E. coli strain. Next, we have the production of staggered and blunt ends. The type 2 restriction enzymes commonly recognize DNA sequences which are palindromes, that is, the best sequences in the second half of a DNA strand is the mirror image of the sequence in its first half. The complementary DNA strand also exhibited the same pattern. 
The restriction sites of most type 2 restriction endonuclease consists of 4, 5, or 6 base pairs which are predominantly rich in ZC contain. Some restriction enzymes digest DNA at different locations, that is, they got cut within the recognition sequence, producing 5' phosphate or 3' hydroxyl extension called protruding or sticky ends. The sticky ends produced due to staggered cuts by specific restriction endonuclease have complementary base sequence because of palindromic nature of the recognition sites. This property can be utilized for the generation of recombinant DNA molecules. The DNA from two different sources, when mixed and digested by same restriction enzyme, produce complementary cohesive ends. Base pairing of complementary ends of different DNA molecules results in the formation of recombinant DNA. Some restriction endonucleases produce blunt ends as they clip both the strands of DNA molecule at the same sites, also called even cut. Example is the even cutting of DNA molecules at the restriction sites by HIN2, producing blunt ends. Next, we will have cloning vectors. The recombinant DNA technology makes possible the cloning of desired gene from different sources into a whole system producing large copies of cloned gene. The gene of interest is inserted into a self-replicating DNA molecule called vector, forming the recombinant DNA, which is subsequently introduced into a host cell following transformation. The vectors are self-replicating DNA molecules which carry the zin to be cloned to host cell for their multiplication. A good vector should have the ability to replicate autonomously, less than 10 kV in size, unique cloning sites for DNA insertion, selectable marker for easy selection, and detection of transform whole cell and transform the whole cell easily. Now we have plasmid cloning vectors. The plasmids are extra chromosomal, double-stranded, circular DNA molecules present in bacteria. The size of plasmid ranges from less than 1 kb to more than 500 kb and each plasmid carries unique sequence called origin of replication without which the plasmid cannot replicate in the host cell. The plasmid have the favorable properties to be potential vectors but modifications are needed for making them as desired cloning vector. This is because the properties of high quality vectors are lacking in natural unmodified plasmids. The high quality cloning vector should be small in size, less than 15 kV, should have unique restriction site for DNA insertion, and should possess one or more selectable markers for identifying the transformed cells containing the clone gene. Some of the important plasmid vectors are plasmid BR322. This general purpose plasmid cloning vector was first developed in 1980s by Bolivar and Rodriguez. The P signifies for plasmid and B for Bolivar and R for Rodriguez. And 322 represents numerical designation that has relevance to the workers. PVR322 has size of 4361 base pair and carries two antibiotic resistance genes. One gene confers resistance to ampicillin and other to tetracycline. The unique restriction sites for Bombay Swan 
in three and sol one are present within the tetracycline resistant gene. The restriction sites for PST1 is located in ampicillin resistant gene and another recognition site for EcoR1 is also present but not found within any coding DNA. The plasmid also contains an origin of replication that functions only in E. coli and is maintained at high copy number in host cell. The localization of restriction sites within the selectable marker genes allow easy selection of cells which are transformed with recombinant plasmid. When the desired gene is inserted into the cloning vector using restriction enzyme BAMS1 or HIN3, the tetracycline resistant gene will be non-functional due to insertional inactivation. The vectors are transferred into the host cells for cloning of the desired gene through replication of plasmids. For the selection of transformed cells with a recombinant vector with DNA insert, the cells from the transformation mixture are first plated onto medium containing ampicillin. Only those cells with unaltered PBR322 and recombinant PBR322 are able to grow in ampicillin supplemented medium as they have ampicillin resistant gene, while the non transformed cells will be eliminated as they are sensitive to ampicillin. In the second step, the ampicillin resistant colonies are replica plated on agar plates containing tetracycline. The cells containing the intake PBR322 will be resistant to tetracycline as the tetracycline resistant gene is not disrupted and form colonies while cells with recombinant PBR322 will be killed as the DNA insert is integrated into the tetracycline resistant gene, making it non-functional. The tetracycline sensitive colonies are identified and recovered from the master plates and these colonies will have the recombinant PBR322 DNA. Next we have PUC19. This plasmid is 2686 base pair long containing an ampicillin resistant gene. A regulatable segment of beta galactosidase gene, LACZ prime, of lactose operon of E. coli, a leg one gene that produces a repressor protein that regulates the expression of LACZ prime gene, a short sequence with many unique cloning sites for several restriction enzymes, multiple cloning sites, and origin of replication. The foreign DNA is inserted into multiple cloning sites of the restriction disease with one of the restriction enzymes. The host cells of the transformation procedure are plated on to medium containing ampicillin, IPTG, and XCAL. The non-transformed cells are eliminated as they are sensitive to ampicillin. The cells with intact plasmid can grow in the medium with ampicillin and produce blue colonies as they can form functional beta galactosidase. However, the whole cells carrying recombinant plasmid produce white colonies in the same medium. This is due to the integration of DNA insert into the leg Z prime zin as the restriction site is located inside the zin and making it inactive. The white colonies subsequently must be screened to identify those that carry a specific target DNA sequence. Next we have bacteriophage vector. The phases are the viruses which attack and kill the bacteria. Cloning vectors may be developed based on bacteriophage and the most used E. coli phases are lambda and M13 phases. 
The problem associated with the use of wild type lambda vector is its genome size. It must be larger than 38 calories but should not exceed 52 calories in size so that they can be effectively packaged into phase particles. Because of this restriction, the lambda genome can accommodate only 3 kb of DNA insert. Non-essential reasons of the genome which will not affect the ability of virus to infect are deleted so that it can accommodate large size DNA insert. Another limitation is the presence of more than one recognition site for every restriction enzyme, creating problems for integration of DNA insert into the genome after restriction digestion. Lambda genome with very less recognition sites are developed by process of natural selection. Important lambda vectors are insertion and replacement vectors. Next, we have cosmic vector. Cosmic vector consists of component of plasmid and parts of lambda DNA. The lambda DNA portion present in the cosmic include the core site and the sequences required for binding and cleavage by terminus so that under appropriate conditions they are packaged in vitro into empty lambda phase particles. The cosmic comprises components like unique recognition site for restriction enzymes, selectable markers derived from plasmid, and origin of replication for ensuring multiplication of vectors after blasting in the host cell. The cosmic can acquire large DNA insert up to 40 kb in size. The packaged cosmid infects host cells like lambda particles, but they propagate like plasmid when inside the host cell. The cosmid is generally employed for construction of genomic libraries of eukaryotes as they can clone large fragments of DNA. The cosmid has some advantages over fast lambda as they can be propagated and purified by conventional plasmid oriented techniques without having to become familiar with phase technology. The cosmic vector is similar in size as compared to the size of DNA insert. Subcloning of fragments of DNA insert to obtain fragments carrying just the required gene is rather easier with cosmic than lambda vectors. Next we have vector derived from the I plasmid of Agrobacterium. The wild type TI plasmid cannot be used directly as vector as they contain oncogens in tDNA. The oncogens are deleted and replaced by normal DNA sequences so that uncontrolled growth is not produced in plant after infection. This process is called disarming of wild type TI plasmid and any DNA which is inserted in tDNA can be transferred to plant cells if the left and right border sequences are intact. Co-integrate vectors. The production of co-integrate vector requires the integration of this some TI plasmid and intermediate or subtle vector at homologous regions. The oncogens of tDNA are replaced by PBR treated to sequences in this arm TI plasmid, but the nose gene and right and left border sequences of tDNA are kept intact. The intermediate vector of E. coli contains DNA insert, the PBR treated to sequence, tDNA without borders, and plant selectable markers. The plant selectable marker ensures the successful selection of transformed plant cells containing the gene of interest. Inside the agrobacterium, co-integration of the two plasmid is accepted by homologous recombination between the similar PBR322 sequences 
of the two co-integrating plasmids. Now we have binary vector. Binary vector consists of two plasmids. One plasmid contains disarm tDNA sequences with DNA insert and selectable marker with intact left and right border of tDNA. The other plasmid contains only the B region and lacks the entire tDNA including the border sequences. Though the tDNA and B region are located independently on separate plasmids, the B region induces the transfer of tDNA into the plant cells during agrobacterium infection. The binary vector is introduced into the agrobacterium from E. coli by triparental crosses. Finally, we come to the conclusion. The development of recombinant DNA technology enable the resources to isolate desired gene from one organism and multiply them in an unrelated host organism. The primary objectives of recombinant technology in identifying and isolating desired genes which would not have been successful without the discovery of type 2 restriction enzymes. These enzymes cleave DNA molecules reproducibly into fragments of discrete sizes by binding to specific recognition sequences. This important tool of recombinant technology enables not only microorganisms but also plants and animals to be genetically modified and engineered to suit our requirements and objectives. Recombinant DNA technology also involves the transformation of whole cell with recombinant vectors containing the desired gene. Vectors are DNA molecules which act as vehicles for carrying the gene of interest into the whole cell. Majority of vectors developed for cloning are based on bacterial plasmids and bacteriophages. Different vectors based on plasmid, bacteriophage, or agrobacterium have been successfully developed through genetic manipulation to transfer the gene of interest to wide range of host cells.